What's up, nerdy nerdettes? Now that you're back, let's jump into the part you guys have been waiting for with part two of teleportation. Just a quick reminder to hit that like and subscribe button as it helps the channel and your support makes me feel special. Now with the ability to teleport comes the natural ability to shift your form from one location to another without occupying the space in between with teleportation. <laughs> that one was a little on the nose, but anyway. So with the ability to actually warp yourself now, you would still need to be able to defend yourself. So use your ability to teleport to attack with, defend with, or just use teleportation in an offensive manner via teleportation attacks. From there, if your skill of conceptualization is strong enough, then use that to give your teleportation force and or effect a form of solidity along with the shape both simple and or complex with teleportation constructs. Well, now that you can create shapes out of uh, teleportation, hmm. The user can then create a force field around a certain area, allowing anything that breaches it to then be teleported to another location via teleportation barrier generation. Following the theme of creating shapes from teleportation, a user of this power is able to teleport themselves or objects to a new location while leaving a copy of their original form at said location. And uh, to add insult to injury, they would then be able to shift positions between themselves and the original or the clone and whatever other clones that they have with replicative teleportation. If you enjoy jumping through space, and let's be honest here, it would be hard not to, then combine whatever medium or force you use to teleport with whatever you get your hands on and through that continuous connection, grant spatial skipping powers with teleportation infusion. Take that last application a step further and infuse the life energy your body naturally possesses or produces with said teleportation force, <laughs> with teleportation aura. From there, you can then infuse teleportation with whatever combative capabilities you possess, which in my opinion is one of the most demoralizing, humiliating, and completely unpredictable ways of beating someone into recognizing that they shouldn't have raised a hand to you, with teleportation combat. That ability is actually kind of scary. Think about it. How would you counter someone who can do this? <laughs> yeah. And to wrap this part up, since you can slap someone from 20 different positions at once, why not take that to the next level and emit a teleportation force or energy or uh, effect and project it outward in the shape of a vertical or horizontal pillar that will allow you to carve through any and pretty much all defenses put up in front of you with teleportation beam emission. And uh, that pretty much wraps up the main ways that the power of teleportation can be used. So no matter how the teleportation effect looks or what form it comes in within a particular medium, it will use these applications in one way or another. <laughs> now we can get to the next part, the different types of teleportation. This part will be fun. If you happen to be someone who doesn't mind invading other people's personal space, then with tactile teleportation, a user of this power can teleport anything or anyone away by just making physical contact. Teleportation portal creation allows the user to create rifts and or holes in space that connect to two different locations. Partial teleportation allows the user to teleport parts or sections of a selected target away under various conditions. Users of Flash Step can move so quickly within short distances that it appears that they haven't occupied the space in between. That's just a fun one. That really isn't teleportation, but you know, people would mention it, so. And Teleport Dash allows the user, while moving, mind you, to actually warp anywhere within a shortened radius. And uh, while not always, it might carry another secondary effect, such as becoming invisible, intangible, or hopping through spatial portals and or other dimensions. But that's all up to the artist's interpretation, meaning your interpretation. Characters that possess phase jumping speed operate similar to those of Teleport Dash, but gain an extra boost to speed that stacks every time this application is used. With coordinate tethering, you would be able to lock onto a target and then teleport anything the user desires and then transport oneself or other things to that location you choose. 
The funny thing about this type of teleportation is that it's more precise and exact than others, and as such, tends to be way more predictable, so be careful about that. And in a goofy twist, isoportation allows the user to shift from one still pose to another without having to perform the movements that would lead to that next pose. Meaning things like momentum and inertia mean nothing to a user of this type of teleportation, as they would be able to teleport from a standing position to a sitting position, from a punching position to a kicking position instantly without having to make the movement in between each movement, if that makes sense, which I'm pretty sure it does, but anyway. This is normally seen on comedic relief type characters or when animators want to be lazy, I, I mean creative. Matter substitution allows you to substitute one collection of molecules with another and then change positions with it or have it change positions something else. So for story's sake, the teleporter will rarely use plain old air as something to teleport with and instead give the excuse of needing to swap with something uh, that has more solidity. So expect anything from small rocks to raindrops being used to swap with not just air. So if I see a rock over there, I'll just teleport to where that rock is and have that rock teleport to where I was. Scattering and reforming grants the users the ability to break your or other bodies up into various materials, dust, ice, crystals, flower petals, etc., and then reconstruct it somewhere else. This essentially lets the body instantly reform upon breaking down, completely restoring its former state and then reconstructing every piece of it that was out of place to begin with. The built-in limitation for this ability is that the user needs to be wary of the environment or their own mental state in order to use this power successfully. And in a weird, kinda redundant, roundabout way, teleportation flight pointlessly allows the user, and I do mean pointlessly, but anyway, it allows the user to fly by, get this, teleporting themselves through the air constantly so gravity doesn't have a chance to affect them. Yeah, I know it's kind of pointless, but if you lean on the trickster side of the scale, you could use this to throw off opponents who are trying to guess what your ability is, as this version comes with a form of invulnerability as they just continuously travel, aka teleport through whatever you try to do to them. And if you're tripping on god levels of power or boast massive amounts of energy and stamina, then select as many people or things as you can and shift that large amount of matter at once with mass teleportation. Multi-dimensional walking allows the user to travel to different spatial and temporal dimensions completely ignoring the original reality you came from. <laughs> this normally allows the user to hop through dimensions in order to shorten travel time between two or more locations. And to wrap this up, users of space-time skipping can walk through the multiverse and beyond like nothing matters to them, <laughs> because at this point it really doesn't. A user of this application's teleportation capabilities is so powerful that it skips both distance, aka space, and duration, aka time. So they'd be able to jump forward in time and then choose a different location or jump backwards in time in the same location or any combination you could think of. And there you have it, teleportation in a nutshell. <laughs> Another one of the most popular abilities ever conceived. I don't think there is a single person who wouldn't want this power as it just really makes everything easier. I don't even know why you wouldn't want this power. I'm not even into overpowered abilities. Me personally, I like to pick an average ability and figure out ways I can make it overpowered. But even this power, I would still see massive uses and advantages that this power could give you. And as such, I would end up picking it. But like everything else, powers I mean, it still has its fair share of weaknesses. <laughs> a lot actually well enough that they need to be mentioned, as this isn't all sunshine and roses with a power like this. Users of teleportation negation can prevent you from, you know, teleport. <laughs> and users of teleportation immunity are immune to this power, so stay away from anybody who supports those two abilities. Those competent in spatial manipulation, so let's just say uh, adept to master level, can perform acts such as a uh, teleportation diversion and redirect the user's landing position. Or they can just straight up predict where the user's going to teleport. But uh, beyond that, users still might be susceptible to telefrag, aka teleporting inside of something. And this could cause them to kill themselves or a peer or a friend or something like that, so be careful. Momentum, aka inertia, might also be conserved when teleporting, meaning that they can't simply avoid fall damage just by teleporting to the ground or slightly above it before they hit it, because inertia is a motherfucker. 
or in the inverse, teleported objects or persons may lose their speed completely because they were just randomly moved so they still encounter some form of inertia that stops them. In some unlucky cases, the act of teleporting may take time, meaning that the user may need to concentrate or perform some kind of gesture. If the user's power is calculation based, and let's be honest here as a spatial ability, low intellect and stress may hinder the ability because you know, math and mental composure, check out space manipulation if you want more information on that. If the space time coordinate which the user is teleporting to is already occupied, they may get thrown or warped into a whole another location or suffer some type of teleportation malfunction such as a fusion, I think I said that briefly earlier. Teleportation may also cause a spatial disturbance, which allows highly sensitive opponents to track down their destination, you know, those with enhanced senses or whatnot. Shoot, they may need to know, sense, or have been to the area which they're trying to teleport to in order to do so properly so they don't run into the problem mentioned earlier. And lastly, the user's own knowledge, skills, and natural limits will determine how far one gets with this ability. So, uh, <laughs> have fun. And now, with all that out of the way, it's time to place this ability on the scale. Teleportation is, is just that power. <laughs> I mean, you can't really ask for anything more or anything less. Well, you can, but anyway, that'd be kind of selfish. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, the Shea scaling system gives this power a spot skipping 8.5. Extremely powerful, extremely useful, but not too necessary. It's more like icing on top of your overpowered cake. But if this is your only power, then there's a lot of ways you could use it in order to just be a complete menace. So, yeah.